Hello and welcome to the Sunshine Cathedral. The Sunshine Cathedral is a different kind of church where the past is past and the future has infinite possibilities. And with that, we invite you to come and worship with us here on Sunday mornings at 9 and 1030 a.m. at 1480 Southwest 9th Avenue. Now, I invite you to come in and worship with us here at the Sunshine Cathedral. Our first reading today is from the wisdom of Martha Dawson. Today is the day to shed worry of all sort. If I am concerned about my health, if my finances need strengthening, if a loved one is facing unpleasant circumstances, if difficult decisions are before me, I turn to my God and release these concerns into God's hands. I know God loves me and pours out divine peace, causing any problem to melt. I feel peace beyond understanding taking charge in my life. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Thanks God. Our second reading is from the wisdom of Elsie McKay. Jesus recognized one presence with him, with you and me, the spirit of all good. He said, I will pray and God shall give you another comforter, the spirit of truth. He was talking about the essence of life, the very substance of your body temple, as well as your soul, the changeless, eternal Christ spirit. In these human words, God's voice is heard. God is with you. A reading from the gospel according to John. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the eternal will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel, the good news. To uh, the end of our six week sermon series, Resurrection Means. And today we look at resurrection as rising above our fears, or at least some of them. Fear will always present itself and we'll always find something to attach our fear to. Some of us just sort of carry anxiety around and we are always looking for something to attach it to and we're always successful. We always find something to apply our anxiety to. But there are skills we can learn to help us reduce anxiety in our lives, to have more hope in our lives, more peace in our lives, and to uh, help us be raised above the constant state of anxiety. Um, fear of a thing is almost always worse than the thing itself. When the thing, no matter how terrible it is, comes, we have no choice but to face it, and we usually summon a great deal of courage and tenacity and resilience in the facing of it. But the dreading of it, that's where the misery is. And so if we can learn to reduce our fears, even by half, we will have increased joy in our lives exponentially. We uh, can work through our fears and return to peace in spite of the troubling times. And we may not can do that alone. We may need help. We may need support. And we may need some time. And we may, may need some practice. And we may need some help. But then that's what spiritual communities are for. We can help one another return to peace. We can help one another have victory over fear. The psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the psalmist also said, the divine is my light and my safety. Whom shall I fear? Psychiatrist Carl Augustus Minninger said, fears are educated into us and can, if we wish, be educated out. And it is by this time a well-known uh, saying that fear <coughs> is really false evidence appearing real. That the fears that we have have so much to do with our minds. Uh, that what we fear is what we have built up in our imagination. And we can use the same power of imagination to calm those fears. Spiritual teacher and minister Mary Menon Morrissey says, you block your dream when you allow your fear to grow bigger than your faith. 
and Andre Gide <clears throat> said, there are very few monsters who warrant the fear we have of them. There are very few monsters that warrant the fear we have of them. So many times we dread the end of that relationship and that was so much more painful, all of that dreading, than when it happened. And we just moved through it and grieved the loss and continued forward. I spent my entire childhood and young adulthood dreading uh, the death of my grandmother. And I was very, very sad when she died. But I must say, whereas it is, it is uh, natural to grieve a loss once it happens, it was not wise to grieve it for years and years and years before it happened. I had a lot of unnecessary misery. I had this fear that made things worse than they needed to be. There are very few monsters who warrant the fear we have of them. The Sufi poet Hafiz said, fear is the cheapest room in the house. I would like to see you living in better conditions. Isn't that wonderful? Fear is the cheapest room in the house. I would like to see you living in better conditions. Ralph Waldo Emerson, who we hear from a lot in this church, says the wise person in the storm prays God not for safety from danger, but for deliverance from fear. The danger is real, but the fear is a choice. The danger may be real, but the fear is not something that is inevitable. And if we can diminish the fear, then we can face the thing. Of course, professional athlete Jason Collins showed great courage recently by coming out, not waiting till he was retired, not waiting till uh, he had nothing to lose, but by coming out uh, in the midst of his success. In 1969, New York City cross-dressers, drag queens, and transgender folk showed great courage by saying, we won't take being harassed for being different anymore. And their courage spurred the Stonewall riots and the gay liberation movement was born. And almost a year before that, MCC founder Troy Perry showed great courage when he started a church that would welcome and affirm and celebrate gay men and lesbians and transgender people and leather folk and heterosexual friends and relatives and allies of LGBT people and Christians and Jews and all the children of God. In a time when same-gender love was criminal, in most states, and considered disordered in the medical community, Troy prophetically stood up and said, queer people are God's people, and we're going to do drag shows and leather balls and pride parades and offer a new kind of worship and experience and preach empowerment until all people are treated with dignity and justice. Christian mystic Julian of Norwich in the 14th century showed profound courage when far ahead of her time, she referred to God as both father and mother. Now, we think the feminists started that in the 1970s, but no, in the 14th century, here is Julian of Norwich saying that God is as much one as the other, both and neither. And, of course, we see uh, those images in the scripture of God as mother and God as, as father and God as friend and God as fortress and God as rainbow and God as dove and God as so many things that God can't be any one of them, that God is beyond image, which is why in the commandments we are told not to have any graven image. And so we are given so many possibilities so as to not fixate only on one because God has to be bigger than anything we could imagine. And Julian of Norwich also showed great Courage when she used provocative image as God as her lover. That is a little stunning even today for some people, but such was the ecstasy and the intimacy that she had with the God in her that she described that God as friend and father and mother and lover. And she also showed great courage when she offered one of the most comforting prayers in Christian history. All shall be well. All shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Let's pray that together right now. All shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. To affirm that all is well, even when conditions don't yet demonstrate that, takes great faith, or we could say courage. And the spirit within us can provide us that courage just as it provided her with that courage. Louise Hay similarly teaches that when a problem comes up, one of the best things you can do <clears throat> is to say these positive affirmations. All is well. 
Everything is working out for my highest good. Out of this experience, only good will come. I am safe. An MCC minister and a mentor of mine, Reverend Irene Travis, died a few days ago. She was a marvelous preacher. She preached the first nativity sermon I ever heard that included the word afterbirth. She wanted us to see the event more realistically than might be portrayed on a Hallmark card. And so instead of just making it be pretty and sanitized, she painted the picture of what childbirth, she herself is a mother. And so she painted the the picture of what childbirth is like and how difficult it would be in a barn away from home. And so she painted that picture to make it all the more real to us, and she did it brilliantly. She preached the best gay pride sermon I ever heard titled, Let My People Go. Of course, based on Moses saying that to Pharaoh. And in a chapel service for ministry students, she preached a sermon titled, Unfettered, based on Luke 19's rendition of Jesus sending people to untie a donkey and bring it to him. And the great singer of that sermon was when she said at the end, Honey, your ass has been set free. And of course, we loved it. We even had t-shirts made (laughs) quoting her saying, your ass has been set free. But what was most inspiring about Reverend Travis to me was in the late 1990s when she was diagnosed with cancer. Now, the very word strikes fear into our hearts, doesn't it? And she had very difficult treatments to survive that cancer. She had a radical mastectomy and a year of intense treatment treatment. She had to go out of town and stay uh, uh, in a room where no one could even see her or send her flowers. She had to be in a germ-free environment. And after all of that, she was finally pronounced cure, and she came out, and she went back to work, and she, uh, and she stayed in remission forever. She, she had such a positive attitude about it throughout the whole thing. And after she recovered, she smiled once as she said to me with remarkable joy, I can wear vests now. <laughs> she had been very busty and never, and never uh, wore vests. But she said, like, she found something good about it. She said, I can wear a vest now. She was wearing a vest at the time. She faced the facts with an assurance of greater truth. She faced facts with an assurance of a greater truth. There is something more than this experience. There is something more than what has happened. I can interpret these events in lots of ways. I'm in charge of how I respond to this, and there is something good still to salvage from this. Her wholeness and her happiness didn't depend on circumstances, and rather than being bitter or discouraged from the challenge, she chose to be grateful for the love and support she received. She said the prayers of the people helped her survive that terrible ordeal. And someone asked her if she really believed that, that wasn't it really the medical treatment? Wasn't it really medical science? Wasn't it really maybe even just blind luck? How is it that she could say that the prayers of the people are what tipped the scales in her favor? And she said, well, people prayed, and I am better, and it's more fun to believe that one had something to do with the other. It's just more fun to believe that one had something to do with the other. A belief is a well-rehearsed thought. Our belief is an opinion that we hold until it seems to be self-evident. And so she just chose to believe that she could make something good out of something terrible. It's just more fun to believe that people wishing me well helps me be better. She focused on what was good more than on what was difficult, and she praised the blessings rather than obsessing on the challenges. What an inspiration she was to me, and I hope just hearing about her is an inspiration to you. MCC instills courage if we embrace the mission of MCC. MCC that produces such ministers as the Reverend Irene Travis. If we will embrace the mission of MCC, we will be embracing a mission that will instill courage in our lives. The MCC core values are inclusion, community, spiritual transformation, and social justice. Those are the core values. That's what it means to be MCC, is to uphold these values of inclusion, community, spiritual transformation, and social justice. To be MCC is to uphold these values, and it takes courage to live into those values. 
It takes courage to reach out to and welcome new kinds of people, people of all ages, people who speak various languages, people who struggle with sobriety, people who struggle with depression, people whose gender identity doesn't fit neatly into artificial binaries, people longing for spirituality but who have no particular loyalty to religious tradition. It takes courage to build a community based on diversity rather than tradition, on an egalitarian vision rather than on privilege for a few, on the promise that we can stand together to make the world better rather than simply to make a few happy while teaching all of us that if we will receive the message that there are tools we can use, we can then use those tools to take responsibility for our own happiness. We can make ourselves happier. Rather than trying to make some happy, we can give the tools to everyone to make themselves happy. And we can build a community, a diverse community, trying to make the world better and trying to make ourselves feel good about ourselves. We are responsible for our happiness and well-being, but that takes courage. It takes courage to offer the hope of spiritual transformation because transformation means change and there are those who violently oppose it. And yet a message that does not include the possibility and promise of transformation is not a gospel message. What could be a more radical change than resurrection? And it takes courage to stand up for justice rather than being content with just us. To be MCC is to embrace a life of courage. MCC doesn't stand for mean, critical Christians. There are enough of those outside of MCC. <laughs> MCC stands for many things in this faith community. We are a metropolitan community church. We are a multi-faith community church. Jews, welcome. Buddhists, welcome. Humanists, welcome. Agnostics, welcome. Searchers and seekers, welcome. Protestants, welcome. Catholics, welcome. Eastern Orthodox, welcome. Mormons, welcome. Jehovah's Witness, welcome. We are a multi-faith community church. We are a marvelously caring community. We are a mendacity-confronting church. Mendacity means falsehood or lies. We are a metaphysical community center. We are a mission-conscious church. To be any of those things, and certainly to be all of them, is to rise above fear and move boldly and intentionally forward into a future with infinite possibilities. We are a movement of courage, a movement that defies the status quo, that learns from the past but refuses to repeat it, a movement that will not let bigotry, privilege, hate, or fear dictate our direction, a movement that says until the trans person is afforded full dignity and equality, our work is not done, a movement that says until marriage equality is a universal reality, our work is not done. Sometimes people say, why do you always have to mention issues? Jesus was not crucified because he avoided issues. To be a gospel community is to tackle injustice, is to stand up for the marginalized, is to speak for the voiceless, is to care for those who have been downtrodden. To be Christian is to follow Jesus, and to follow Jesus is to address issues. Until calling women butch or men girly is no longer considered insulting because however we express ourselves and however we are comfortable in our bodies should be celebrated, until that day, our work is not done. Until women have the final say over their own bodies, our work is not done. Until economic justice is recognized as much as a spiritual issue as a political one, our work is not done. Until diversity is no longer resisted and not merely tolerated, but worked for and lifted up as sacred, our work is not done. Until the entire Church of Jesus Christ says boldly that God is beyond nationality, that English is not God's language, and that God is not a boy's name, our work is not done. Until heterosexuality and homosexuality and bisexuality are equally affirmed as good gifts from God because God is love and whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in them. Until that is recognized universally, our work is not done. Until we can celebrate our religious path without insisting that it is the only way to experience divine love, our work 
is not done. The work we are called to do takes courage. But guess what? Courage is just another word for trust. And trust is the literal meaning of the biblical word often translated as faith. And faith is a gift of God's spirit. And what God gives, God gives freely and universally. Our work requires trust in the goodness of it and trust in our worthiness to perform it. And when we operate in the power of that trust or faith, miracles happen in our lives and in our world. And I have one more bit of good news for you. By participating in this courageous movement, this movement leading our community into a new day, and by participating in this church, which is a leader in the movement, by sharing positive speech and goodwill and financial generosity and loving prayer and your presence in worship, even when 95 is closed and you, and you still find ways to get here, and by sharing your volunteer service with this progressive, positive, practical ministry, by being fully engaged and supportive of Sunshine Cathedral, which is a different kind of church where the past is past and the future has infinite possibilities, you will be sharing hope and joy and courage with the world. And what we focus on, we experience more of, and what we give, we tend to receive. As you support the movement of courage, you will be building up courage in your own life. And that courage is what can help you face the issues in your own life. The health issues, the financial issues, the relationship issues, the coming out issues, the sobriety issues, whatever the issue may be. By supporting this courageous, bold, forward movement, moving ministry, you will be sowing seeds of courage in your own life. Courage that will help you face illness, financial difficulties, disappointments, injustice, loneliness, loss, or depression. By being part of this courageous movement, you will find you are increasingly experiencing victory over fear in your own life. And where there is no fear, there is peace. And where there is peace, there is joy. And where there is joy, all is well. Resurrection means victory over fear. And what that means is, in the words of blessed Irene Travis, honey, your ass has been set free. That's resurrection power. And this is the good news. Amen. I can't promise freedom from any particular difficulty. We all have challenges. We all have difficulties. We all have disappointments. But there are ways to deal with them. There are ways to face them. There are ways to make sure that those things don't have the last word, that those things don't define us, that those things don't determine our quality of life. We can say, now what? This happened. So what? Now what? We can take what has happened and find something good. We can say, I choose to believe the thing that is more fun. We can say, I can wear vests now. We can say, I believe in myself no matter what has happened to or around me. I believe in myself no matter what others have said. I choose to believe in possibilities. I choose to believe that I deserve hope and happiness. We can make that choice, and that choice will empower us, and that empowerment lifts us up and that's resurrection. Do you need resurrection power in your life today? If so, ministers are coming forward now to anoint us with oil, a simple ritual, no magic in it, won't fix any of your problems, but it will remind you that right where you are, God is, and where God is, there is always reason for hope, and there is always an endless supply of peace and joy. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. <laughs> Now forgive me things you broke it and said, This is my body, open to you. And as you eat this, remember me. This is my body, open to you. And as you eat this, remember me. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my life, poured out for you. 
And as you drink this, remember me. This is my life poured out for you. And as you drink this, remember me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread. We recall the life you lived and the truth that you spread. Thank God our maker, oh heavenly dove. In Christ we celebrate your wondrous love. And God our maker, oh heavenly dove. In Christ we celebrate your wondrous love. Here at the Sunshine Cathedral, we practice an open communion. And what that means is you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to receive the sacrament, just as you are, with whatever your beliefs or doubts may be. You are welcome to participate in this feast of unconditional love. My friends, these are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, I want to thank you for joining us for Worship Day here at the Sunshine Cathedral. Again, if you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, please stop by and worship with us on Sundays at 9 and 10.30 a.m. If you'd like to find out more about the Sunshine Cathedral, about our resources, or about our books published by our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins, or if you'd like to make a donation to the Sunshine Cathedral, please visit us at www.sunshinecathedral.org. Until the next time, may God continue to richly bless you on your journey.